Hello and welcome to another episode here on the War of the Rebellion channel. Today we are going to start a new series where we are going to explore material I covered in my book Liberty and Slavery published by Alice U Press. In the series we are going to look at a number of individuals, migrants from Austria, Hungary, Poland, Germany and Ireland and how they experienced European revolutionary events, how they came to the United States and witnessed the war of the rebellion and in a few cases also what they did after the war of the rebellion. John Mitchell initially settled in California after he escaped the British authorities in Van Diem's land. But he discovered that California was not to his liking. It was too far away from the center of political activities. So he goes by the way of Central America to New York City. There are already some early wars on his part with regard to territorial slave question. But Mitchell, as a result of a brief stay on the Brazilian coast, holds an extremely negative view on African American and Afro-Caribbean people. During his passage from California to New York, he has a conversation that is recorded on board a steamship in the Caribbean. While he doesn't enjoy expansionism, there is a section where he calls the ruler of the Mosquito Kingdom on the coast of Central America a Zumbo Sovereign. A lot of racial stereotyping in his language. A lot of negative word choices that Mitchell engages in. Initially he worked for John Mayer, but then he created his own paper. He disliked the Republican Party. But he also disliked the Democratic Party. He agreed that the coming of the conflict in North America was irrepressible. That there was fight coming. But he turned quickly into a defender of slavery. He viewed it as a positive good. In one of his articles he wrote that as a good Irishman he should wish for a quote good plantation well stocked with healthy Negroes in Alabama. He would slavery as a good thing, as a beneficial thing for African Americans. As that put him in odds, with a lot of individuals in the North, Mitchell decided to go south, establish a new paper, The Southern Citizen, in Knoxville, Tennessee, where after his brief experience with farming, he decided that newspapers were the future for him. In the pages of The Southern Citizen, Mitchell advocated for the reopening of the slave trade with Africa, realizing the growing conflict in North America, but then also realizing there was in the works a new revolution in Europe for Irish independence. Mitchell relocated in 1859 to Paris with parts of his family. 
when the war breaks out, he sneaks from New York down to Richmond. And in Richmond, joins initially the Richmond Enquirer, a newspaper. But because of its views and editorial policy, Mitchell disagrees with a lot of what it said and instead switches over to the Richmond Examiner as his main place of work. The Examiner was extremely critical of the policies of Jefferson Davis, especially his unwillingness to fight a war with all and any means necessary to bring about victory irked Mitchell the wrong way. A number of his sons paid the highest price for supporting the rebellion, dying on the fields of battle. Mitchell had for the second time supported a failed revolution. Many of his views with regard to secession, slavery, it's difficult to pinpoint where they come from. He likely believed that he translated the Irish experience into the United States and it made most sense for Southern independence, just like Irish independence, to support that. Very much in contrast to Mayer and many other Irish immigrants to the United States. If these brief episodes sparked your interest about the individuals covered Please consider not only subscribing and liking this channel, commenting on this episode, but also looking into purchasing my book, Liberty and Slavery, published by LSU Press.